let's throw the map up here. And let's, uh, this is kind of a cool segment. I like doing this. This is Jordan. Oh, I messed up my phone, apparently. All right, this is Jordan Lake, which is perfect since this is Jordan Lee. And this is in North Carolina. And this is apparently not a great fishery, according to Jordan Lee. He's not a big fan. It's a good fishery. I just didn't do that great. Well, we're going to break it down for him. What, what do you, I mean, where all did you go on this deal? Is it a pretty big lake? I remember some of those lakes out there were pretty small, weren't they? See, my, my problem is we actually have one day of practice there, which is not very much. Uh, and water was flooded. It's probably pretty high now, or if it's, if you know, it was in the bushes pretty good when we were there. But uh, it was early. You know, water was still low 50s. It was still kind of early. Um, and I kind of, I, I looked one day up the lake, my one day of practice, um, you know, it, it really depends on the water level and, you know, I, I went all the way up north on both of those deals. Um, I'm trying to see, um, yeah, I, I can tell right now. So this was actually, when we were there, um, I believe one of the anglers, that did really, really well. This was all flooded out. So all that, all that you're seeing there was up in the woods and um, the water started to fall. And so all those fish that were in those woods kind of sucked into that creek, I believe. You know, you can see that ditch, defined ditch and stuff. And it was just kind of, every day in the spring's changing. You know, that's the one thing to know. You're not gonna go one year and go here this exact spot it's really day to day especially when the water's up and down so it's not going to last very long so whatever you go do is not probably going to work the next weekend yeah when we, you have high water stuff but a great place to start is um you know depending on the water level is the back of one of these major creeks when those fish first pull up um and if you have falling water like we were dealt with those fish are going to kind of start backing out and moving off those flats because they got to get out of that shallow water and, and they're going to go to a ditch or, you know, something like that. That's what our tournament, you know, what happened. But um, typically the upper end of the lake is going to have more cover. You know, you're going to have more trees, you know, you're going to have um, more cypress trees and, and bushes and stuff like that. So that's always a good place to start um especially in the spring and uh you know you can spend a whole day in in the back of one of these creeks and we only had a day to practice so i had to kind of bounce around and, and really try to try to find an area um but you can do that or you can kind of do the opposite thing and when you're up up the lake and like like this um there's small pockets up there too and the good thing about, you know, you can zoom over to the right a little bit. Um, yeah, up towards that that muddy creek, right down below that, I, um, there's a couple little small pockets right there. And, uh, you know, those I caught some good fish in there. Um, but the good thing about those smaller pockets this time of year is, you know, they get overlooked a little bit more, but you can fish them quicker and you can kind of find out, figure out what the fish are doing. Instead of going in the back of a huge creek, you know, where there's tons of bushes and stuff like that, you can go in these small pockets and that's where those fish are gonna spawn because it's protected. And uh, you can fish it pretty thorough and it's not gonna take you all day to do it, so. Yeah, but there's just one or two trees in them too. So you have those places they should set up, but you don't have to work through a whole forest. You can just pull up, make a skip and move on. Yeah. And, and like the, in, in this picture that's in this, you know, this was, pro this is probably five foot low. We were five foot high. So there was, there was considerable amount of water on those trees, um, you know, several feet all the way back in them. And, and there are a lot of bushes and stuff when we were there, but that's what, you know, I kind of did and, and flipping, uh, if I could go back, I would fish slower and, uh, you know, I really fished too fast because I wasn't didn't have a good area, so I was really trying to find them during the during our one day there. But uh, yeah, slowing down and and, and kind of picking everything apart is really the really the deal. Well, uh, this time of year, we're kind of getting to that shad spawn deal. What 
what would be like a few places you'd recommend they go look for that? So, I mean, if there was a shad spawn, yeah, probably the next over there, probably in two or three weeks, it's probably going to really start happening. Um, main thing to do, if the water's low and there's no cover in the water, I'll be going to the points where those fish are coming to, those shallow points. If the water's still up in the bushes and you have uh, points, you're fishing really the points um, or, or grass or anything like that but that's always a great place to start where there's bushes anything green in the water um and that's a pattern most of the time you're looking for birds and, and it's not a spot but coming out of those pockets you know i'm going to be looking where those fish are going to start moving first and it's it's going to be the points and the shallow cover around those points and that's where the shattered are probably going to be and that's a great place to start um Looks like you got a marina down here. Out on the lake. And yeah, something like that break wall right there on that marina. Um, it looks stupid. I, I mean, I've seen guys kill them on jerkbait. And I've caught fish on in Oklahoma and different places on that, like that break wall. Um, you know, Chad spawn type deal. Throw a spinnerbait up there over 25 foot of water and catch fish off of it. I've seen that same deal on Lake Lewis where we used to fish uh, those college tournaments out there. And they had those tires. Big, yeah, they had the tires on those yeah. walls and stuff. Those things would get nasty. I've seen guys flip those, and they'd be like 25 or 30 feet deep, and they flip over him with a jig and catch yeah. them. I'm like, how am I? Why am I even here? That lake is so weird. I hated that lake. Texoma's got some of those. Some of those Oklahoma and, and Texas lakes got some of those tires. But uh, that's a redneck break wall right there. There's them tires out in front. But. Yeah, any any of, that, any of that kind of stuff, and you know, uh, is a shad's pond type deal. You can you can try to find that in the first hour or so. But um, water level is really so important this time of year, and, and kind of making sh figuring out what the you know going up and down, and um, and but looking at Google Earth, you know, like on the Angler app, I mean, that's something I always do, no matter where I'm going, because you know, you can kind of see, you know, those long running points. You, you can look at the and see the cover on there and, and drop a waypoint and it, it helps out big time um, doing your research like that. It looks like there's a bunch of grass and stuff in the back of his pocket too. So pretty, uh, pretty good looking little, yeah. Like I said, grass there and, and see when we were there, those grass beds, I remember seeing those on, on, you know, real earth and stuff, and uh, they were so far under the water. I mean, there was no fish relating to it because it was up in the woods, and those fish were up in the woods. But, uh, but yeah, that that's probably a great place to look at the water's actually level. I'm sure that's a good, great, you know, swimming a jig around that. When you when you uh, get a lot of water over that right there, can you do then like you do on Gunnersville and like fish a trap through it? I tried. Um, couldn't do it i mean you i, I, th I tried throwing us uh you know looking for those kind of pre-spawn fish but when we were there for some reason those fish wanted to be up and it, it was you know was so flooded and and those i caught one or two maybe you know but they weren't really relating to it where i, where I found them they were actually relating to the wood and i guess all the stuff that was flooded yeah more than they would the grass um that i found but it, it looked right i mean it, it was the only thing that you know, was, you know, out of the trees that was good cover, but they weren't really relating to it for me. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I mean, we got a little lake here that floods at Mill Pond. You fished it before. I packed a bag on it, Yates Lake, but uh, it floods. I mean, it's, it's probably little Lake Martin. It's pretty much a river channel and a couple of creeks, so it'll get up. I think there's a 17-foot flood plain, and I've tried to do that before getting the backs of the creeks and stuff where there's like, it's usually up on the bank, like a little grassy hill. And yeah, I, I throw a I've caught a few, but it doesn't seem like I don't know if those fish just aren't used to it and they want to go as shallow as they can and get up in the woods or what. But it just seemed like it worked somewhere at some point with floods like that. Yeah, uh, watercolor, you know, but it was real muddy too when we were on that lake, and those they just they just didn't want to be out. They wanted to be up. Those big ones wanted to be up in those trees.